everyone and welcome back to my channel i was really happy that for this spring and summer i saw a trend coming back back from the 80s uh, i'm sure you have seen it too it is the ballet core and i really like that style uh, it is the um, leg warmers the ballet flats the tutus the tool skirts all kind of skirts wrap uh, cardigans um, you know what i mean it's a very nice a feminine but if in my case not too girly because that I don't like it but that belly core trend is really up my alley and uh, you saw it on the runways probably in magazines maybe uh, Urban Outfitters had some uh, um, uh, items on that even Zara I saw so you must have seen it any, anywhere and I really liked it I always I keep most of my clothing, most of my shoes, so I still have my ballet style uh, clothing and shoes from the 80s and I can now repurpose them and I'm very happy because I like that style a lot especially because now, well back then also, but now also um, it is um, combined a bit with the grunge style that was in that same era so that makes it that it's not too girly, not too sweet, not too pink uh, I don't really like that, but uh, in a feminine style I liked it very very much So uh, we'll start this video with part 1 of the ballet core uh, outfit We're gonna start with the skirt in this one And then we have one or I think even two more videos for this outfit So that you can again get a whole outfit like we did in the last few videos Where we made the business casual outfit and I hope you liked that one too. This one will be quite different, but still really in my uh, the way that I like to wear my clothing, the style that I like. And of course, where you uh, you can switch it up, you can use the pattern for a totally different style because that is what we do here on my channel. We have a basic pattern that we switch up, and even with a different fabric, you get a different style. So I hope you like this one. I show you what we're gonna make. And these are the pictures that I saw on the website of uh, Urban Outfitters. I really like that ballet style uh, look uh, in the left picture. You see with the leg warmers and the ballet flats and the loose skirts normally and the shorter uh, vests and blouses and tops. I really like that look. It's really nostalgic to me from the 80s. Um, and that skirt in the middle is the one we're gonna make. It's more the grunge like style uh, of the ballet uh, style, uh, more like Madonna in the 80s. Um, and it, I think it's a really nice skirt. I um, made a close up of it. It is a stretch, a stretchy skirt, a jersey skirt uh, with no uh, closure, no zipper or something. Uh, and it has layers uh, with um, lace overlays that are diagonal and I really like that look. It looks very nice. We're also going to make a, a top to it, a blouse um, to wear uh, over um, a, a tank top or something just as an over a part like in the ballet style has. It has those, those lighter vests and, and uh, cardigans to wear and also the more sheer blouses uh, to leave open or to wear over a tank top. So that's the one that we're going to make in the next video. This one will be the skirt and uh, I will show you how we'll make it. We'll make it in parts and uh, as I said it has no closure, no zipper or something. It's just parts of the jersey uh, combined with the ruffles of the lace and I think it gives a very very nice look. So instead of showing you the pattern, I will just uh, show you here in a smaller format because I don't think I can really clearly show you when I have the whole uh, wheel size pattern. So you can use your uh, basic pattern for a skirt that we uh, normally use for a skirt. I will leave the link where you can make that pattern down below in the description box and here in the corner. But you can also just measure it on yourself because we uh, to use a jersey fabric uh, and that means that we don't really need that uh, pattern what you can do is measure your waistline and divide that by two and measure your hip width and uh, make sure that you measure that uh, on your hip height so measure if you don't know uh, how to measure yourself i also have a video how to do that i will also link that down below and here in the corner uh, how to do that because you need to measure your hip width at your hip height 
and you can see there what your hip height is so then you measure your hip width and also divide it by two and um, what you do it's what we do is we make um, these uh, parts out of um, the uh, viscose jersey that I have here and then we make onto that um, the ruffles out of uh, lace and this top part that we make uh, I'll make double because that won't have an overlay of the um, lace so I want that double up because the viscose jersey is rather thin so we just make a um, double piece and uh, when you sew here on the top a casing you can put some elastic in and you can just uh, when you use a viscose jersey you can just use your measurements um, you will get in because I also uh, I already tried it in the former video where we made the business casual skirt when you have your um, waist not more than 30 centimeters less than your hip width you certainly can get in because that is my measurements and I didn't have a problem because of course this is way smaller than your hip width but that won't be a problem it will stretch out so that's why we make a casing here to put uh, elastic in uh, so you um, draw that, I made the top piece here on the side 15 cm high, on this side 25 cm high and of all these pieces we make a circle, so you can just make a circle by sewing the two side seams for the front and the back and then you have a circle here. Then you have the next part that is 10 cm on this side, 30 cm on this side and same you make a circle of the front and that back, so you don't put them together already. This one again 30 centimeters here, 10 centimeters here, again a circle and this part is the lace part so I just um, draw that because just there you can see the length because my skirt now with these measurements will be 90 centimeters uh, long because I will make my ruffles uh, of the um, lace 25 centimeters so here will be one, here will be one and then this is the bottom one. So if you uh, want uh, a longer shirt, a skirt or a shorter skirt, just uh, change these measurements the way you like. You can also make the top a little bit higher, but I don't like my uh, ruffles to be too high on my, uh, on my hips. So that's what we're going to cut out. This of the jersey for the front and for the back. This one then is only the lace, but I'll show, tell you later for the lace that will be just very simple. It's just a bit depending on how much you want the ruffles gathered, how long you make the circle of the ruffles. I think I will just uh, use the width of my fabric that is 150 centimeters. Uh, I don't want too much gathering here because then it gets a little bit too bulky. So I'll make mine 25 centimeters, 25 centimeters, 25 centimeters. And I'm still debating if I want here the double ruffle as in the inspiration pictures. They have a longer one. And a short one on top. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe it won't look nice on me. I just have to see um, what will uh, look nice. So that's what we are going to make. And you can cut that out of your fabric now. So for the fabrics I have a black viscose uh, jersey. That is water thin. Uh, but I like to make the top part uh, doubled up. Then you have double coverage on the top of the skirt. And the rest is nice and flowy and airy and this is a very nice material this one is a little bit thicker than the ones that i used for the business casual uh, outfit this one has, has a little bit more weight to it but it doesn't really differ that much and then i have a black lace that is uh, not too open not too wild i don't know if you can see yeah you can see it it has a little bit of flowers or something so we're gonna use these fabrics and then this is what it should look like the one two three parts the top part middle part the bottom part and that last part is the lace part so you don't need that as a pattern and I cut them all out of my uh, jersey and what I did here for the top part because I want this doubled up I doubled my fabric, of course it was already doubled because you always got uh, front and back pieces but I also fold it under so that I have two parts together I hope you can see it, I'll put it a little bit down you see here, I have here, here is the top part of the uh, pattern 
and then I have here the inside. I uh, made it here a bit high because I want to make a casing here for my elastic. So I added here two centimeters to the top of my uh, pattern. Uh, and then of course for the uh, inside part also two centimeters and then the rest. So I just folded this double and then I have two parts of this uh, pattern uh, that is doubled up. So this is the top part. I marked it once. Make sure you mark your uh, patterns that you know which one is which. And I also marked what the grain is because uh, this has a shifted uh, seam like this so that you don't accidentally put your pattern like this on your uh, fabric because this is the horizontal so this is your grain. So mark all your pattern pieces with the grain that you're sure you put them on the right uh, uh, angle on your uh, fabric. So this is the middle part. Part number two, and this is part number three. And of course, here you got your seam allowance, uh, as I always do for my um, jersey fabrics. I don't cut the seam allowance onto my side seams because the fabric is very stretchy, so you get a negative ease. And I normally just uh, get a really perfect fit when I just cut without seam allowance. But try what it works best for you. I will say just make notes what kind of fabric you have. If you uh, just need not to cut some seam allowance or less seam allowance or cut less, uh, more than no seam allowance, try what is best for you. I always cut without seam allowance and when you try it on you can see if you have to take it in more. Usually you don't have too little fabric because your stretch is normally rather a lot and it's a bit depending on what kind of fabric you have, how much stretch, stretch the fabric has. Uh, how much you have to take it in compared to the normal fabrics. So I don't have a separate uh, pattern for uh, stretchy fabrics because it's, it's still depending on the fabric. But you have those three parts and then we have to add our lace. And the top part is the part that has double lace. So I cut that and I was debating if I wanted to cut my lace um, just straight on, so horizontal lines. Uh, that saves a lot of fabric because you can just cut straight along. Um, I have tried it with ruffling it uh, just straight across, just angled on the diagonal. I just really couldn't figure out if it made any difference in how the uh, lace will fall. But I decided to cut my lace in the same angle as my uh, jersey fabric. So also this is the grain and you see the lace is... Uh, not straight across, but uh, on, an, on an angle. And I cut the bigger uh, lace part 25 centimeters high, and then a small one, half of that. And of course, add your seam allowance to the top and the bottom. So this will be connected to, between the first and the second layer of the jersey. Then the lace for between the uh, second and the third one. That is a different angle, so make sure you have your angles right. And also I cut this on that same angle as the bottom of the uh, pattern is. Uh, and I cut this the width of my fabric, that is uh, 1 meter 50. That is the normal size width side of the fabrics in my country. Uh, so that is, um, I think a bit more than one and a half times the distance that I have. I don't like to have too much ruffling here because that gives a bit too much volume, but I like some. So I normally like about one and a half times the uh, length that you have. That's what I do now, so I hope that will be okay. Um, if you like more ruffles, you can do two times, but usually it, it's a bit too much, I think. But just try on a piece of, of lace and ruffle it in and see how that falls, what you prefer for that. So I did uh, around one and a half times the uh, length of the seam. And then the last piece of lace is the bottom of the skirt. So it will be underneath the third part. And again, I cut that on the angle like this. So these are the parts that we have. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make circles out of all the separate pieces. So uh, the jersey parts, the three parts, we sew the side seams, the side seams, the side seams. And the same for the lace parts. So I placed my cutting mat underneath because the black on the dark table is not visible. 
I know it's not dirty. I uh, heard on YouTube in a video that you could uh, clean this uh, cutting mat with alcohol and I did that and it turned out like this. So it looks really ugly. But yeah, I can't help it. So um, make sure you label all your pieces 1, 2, 3 as I did here in my drawing that you are sure which one is which and I also labeled up and down what is the top part and what is the bottom of that section because you can get uh, disturbed very easily. So we're going to start with the top part, part number one. And um, as I said, it, I cut it like this so that I have two layers so that I can uh, line it like that. And we're going to sew them uh, now in a circle, the front and back together. So you place the pieces right sides together like you normally would. And then you sew the side seams and you sew them opened up like this. Because otherwise your uh, casing that you want here in the middle, say the middle of the uh, outer fabric and the lining, must be open. So we sew now the side seams, then you flip it back doubled up like this, also for the back. And then you can just here top stitch uh, uh, the width that you measured for your elastic, top stitch that all around and then you have your casing. our casing with our elastic and I already made my elastic to my waist size I just made a circle out of it with a box stitching and I'm going to insert it you can first sew your uh, casing and then put in your uh, elastic but I will just put in my elastic now um, I mark here where the fold must be and I will put it in between those two circles that we have here so it's so like this, the elastic is now nicely in between the two layers. I can take my fold pins out and I can just sew my casing now. Make sure that you don't sew onto your elastic because your elastic uh, must be loose into your, into your casing. So, so Stick nicely in, nice and stretchy. Now we are going to hem all our uh, lace parts. So I hemmed the first layer of my lace and what I noticed is I already have rather stiff lace. Uh, it's just that simple polyester lace and the whole flowiness that it has has gone and when I gather here on the top Maybe you can see it, maybe not, but then my hem just stands out rather stiff and I really don't like that look because as I said this is already already rather stiff lace. So um, I won't hem, I'll take this hem out, I, I won't hem all the lace pieces because I don't want that. I want to have as much as flowiness as I can with all these layers because it will be a lot of layers on top of each other and uh, when this part is stiff I think that really doesn't look nice uh, and as I said this won't fray um, if you have the um, knitted or crocheted lace out of yarn that is very soft that I like that more but I couldn't find it it's very soft you need to have that because that will unravel that won't just stay put like this one but this one won't unravel or won't fray so you can certainly get away without hemming i just liked uh, when it was more finished but when you uh, cut it nicely straight you can just leave it like this unhemmed 
and then what I will do is um, I make my first layer in two pieces I'm not sure if that will look nice but I'm just gonna try uh, and for all the other lace parts we're gonna make a basting stitch here on the top of the um, layers uh, I think I will do two uh, parts two uh, basting stitches because when you gather them you get a more nicely uh, straight on uh, gather and then you can sew it together in between those two um, basting stitches that normally gives the most most neat look uh, to do you can also just do one basting stitch and then sew them together uh, below that just whatever you prefer have your basting stitches here on the top you take uh, one of the threads the top or the bottom doesn't really matter you hold on to that and then you can scrunch up your uh, fabric your lace until you have the same width as the uh, top part of your skirt of your jersey I uh, pinned the two um, layers together because I'm gonna treat them as one I'm not gonna put the lace in between this is just now one fabric and then you put the uh, lace on top of that right sides together so you just flip it over and put the jersey in between and then you will pin the lace all around and make sure that you have those layers of the jersey nicely pinned together you pin your uh, lace in between the two uh, basting stitches onto your jersey and make sure you nicely distribute all the gatherings that you don't have like now here this is a water flat and these had a lot of gatherings make sure it's nicely all around distributed you can already uh, sew the second part of jersey on top of that but I like to do it in two rows to make sure that all my gatherings are nicely finished and attached to this part and then on top of that I will put the second layer of the jersey so I will come back for that first we're gonna sew that on and to make sure that I have all my angles right I all the time have my drawing uh, on hand next to me to see that this has to be like that that has to be like that because sometimes you get confused with all these layers so make sure that you have your angles right Parts. now we have to place layer 2 of the jersey uh, connect them to layer 1 and we do that by flipping the lace again up and then placing the top part of part 2 right sides to the wrong side of the lace so uh, place it inside out and then flip it on top of it and that is why you have to be sure that you have marked all your pieces right because I have here a pin for where the top is of this part so that I know that I have to connect this part to the bottom of this part and you line up again the side seams and then pin it all around and uh, the nice thing is when you now uh, you already have attached your lace when you sew it from the other side from the jersey side you can just sew along the, uh, over the same uh, stitching as you uh, did when you attached the lace and uh, after that you can if you want to or if you need to uh, thin out here the layers a bit because it's a lot of fabric here it's four layers with gatherings of that lace Our next layer of lace that has to go here underneath and uh, again two rows of pasting stitch gather it in and then same as with the former layer flip your um, lace around your jersey circle match up the side seams and pin that around and sew that around same as the former layer
here is also on and the only thing is the last piece of lace here on the bottom and then your skirt's already done but what i saw when i laid it down now after this <coughs> sorry after this layer is also connected uh, you hardly see the uh, jersey part underneath it because you see where this lace end next already starts and you will get the same here on the bottom uh, and i don't like that the inspiration picture also had uh, just a bit of the jersey showing and then again lace and then a bit of the jersey so uh, when i have uh, put the bottom part on i will cut off uh, some of the bottom of my uh, lace part because i like it to be something like this and here something like this then it is more like the inspiration picture you see that there is uh, the jersey underneath and I like that more than when it is all covered with all that lace. I, I don't like this look. So I will just finish that first and then I will see how to cut off these uh, pieces of lace. It's quite a bit. It's about, I think, six, seven centimeters that I have to cut off. But I think then it looks really more nice because then you can see all those layers. So um, again, uh, make the basting stitch on the top of your uh, bottom lace if you haven't done already. Gather it. And sew it here on the bottom of your uh, skirt and uh, then you are done. And this is just a style that I really really love. I love this whole outfit with the skirt with the cardigan i put my leg warmers on that i still have from the 80s and my ballet flats that i have with ties around the ankle i also have different colors of the same shoes and i'm really happy that this style is back because i love this so much you might took off the second row here because it was way too much bulk here so i just have that single one uh, this is also a single one and i cut it a little bit short because it ended almost where the next a lace ruffle started and I didn't like it. I wanted uh, the um, um, jersey to be visible too because then you have more of that overlay, the, the layering of the pieces and you see the different fabrics. I like that more and I think this is just a very very nice skirt. Of course you can also make it out of a different fabric as I always say you have a totally different outcome. Uh, for example when you make this out of a um, uh, floral fabric you get a nice cottage core uh, skirt or out of an eyelet uh, cotton in white or in soft pink. It's also very nice. It's a total different vibe, but it's a very nice um, pattern to use and reuse with different fabrics. But this one is really, really my favorite. I, that is why uh, I will make in this um, uh, trend also two other uh, pieces. We'll make another web cardigan and also we'll make a blouse or maybe a, more of an, an, a blouse to put over. More a, a softer, well not really jacket but a very thin blouse that you can put over um, a tank top or something. Uh, in the same style as this is and also with of course the colors matching. But I hope you like this style too. If not, just take another fabric and you have another different style. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.